Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you for being with us again. Uh, once again, I'm super excited today. I have a very, very special guest. Um, we've we've had conversations in the past about having having this this young man on with us, and hadn't had the opportunity. But today comes the reality. Um, you know, this is a person that's traveled the world more than a lot of us, even here at the corporate office. Uh, you know, he's been to South Africa, Morocco, Hawaii, California, Chile, uh, Peru. Man, I, I know I'm leaving out a lot of different places. Please help me welcome a uh, pro surfer, pro wind surfer. I got to make sure that I get that right. Federico <laughs> Mauricio, thank you for being with us tonight. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really excited to be here. Yeah, I appreciate you. I I know you have a busy schedule. You know, I know you have a lot going on. And, um, you know, we were just talking before we went on and I asked you one of the questions I asked you was, are you preparing for anything right now? You're in Chile. I've seen a lot of your videos, a lot of your content, a lot of what, what you're doing and uh, you're all over the place. So are you preparing for anything right now? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I'm here in South America. It has been a while, actually. It's been a few months already. And um, in 12 days, I have the my first event uh, of the year in the PWA International Windsurfing Tour World Tour. Okay. So um, unfortunately, I, I, I will miss the first event of the year, which is in four days in Japan. I had a little a little injury to my to my ankle to my ligament, and so also the logistics were really really complicated to get there and come back. So I just decided to focus on the Chile event, which is, it's, I kind of feel like at home here. I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time in the last five years in Chile. I like the, I, I love the vibe. I, there's a really nice community and I love the place and the conditions are world-class. So I was just like, I'm going to focus here and, and try to go full power. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Federico, can you tell us a little bit about what, like, what is your training regimen? Uh, I, I, one of the things I said to you before we went on, and, and this is full transparency and disclosure, I don't know a ton about the sport of windsurfing. And I think a lot of our listeners, a lot of the people watching this video here on the ASEA family and the ASEA community probably don't know a ton about windsurfing. So give us a little bit, just what is, what does a training look like on a daily basis? What kind of preparation? Of course. Yeah, so pretty much windsurfing depends. I my discipline is windsurfing and waves. Windsurfing has different disciplines, has speed, has freestyle, mine is in wave. And so the beautiful and ch challenging thing at the same time is that we depend from wind and waves. Mm -hmm. And also in a way from the direction of both have, you know. And so um my goal is just to sail as much as possible throughout the year, hopefully sail almost every day. And so that's why I have to travel. I mean, I have to, I love to travel and, and I travel uh, in order to be in the best places in the best periods and sometimes also with the best riders so that I can train at the highest level. So, so that's pretty you, much. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt you. I just had a question. You just uh -huh. said something. So a lot, of, a lot of times surfers will say, you know, I'm chasing the waves. The next big yeah. wave. You're not just chasing the wave. You're chasing the wind and the wave and, and the, the waves. Conditions to make it happen. Exactly, exactly, awesome. exactly, exactly. And it's not easy. It's not easy because to find the right angle of wind and wave, it's 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 rare. So, are you subject to whatever time you have to train at during the day, night, evenings, afternoons, depending on when you see the best current, best wind happening, or do you try to kind of just be? at the right place where consistently you'll have you'll you'll have some consistent windy days for the next month or something exactly so that's that's my goal you know to be in places where i know how the conditions are i know that on average you know i get 70 80 percent of the days of wind and i can train and also in order not to make it too crazy up and down uh be in places where i know i can have my morning routine in preparation to the windsurfing and then I, and i can i can have my evening routine and i can focus also on extra activities that I like, you know, and that I, that I have to do. So the yeah. thing about like, for example, oceanic spots, you know, like Hawaii, Chile is that they have these winds, trade winds in Hawaii, Surazo is called here in Chile that are pretty consistent throughout, you know, you have seasons of like six, seven months and you know that they're consistent and you know that the wind starts on a good day or on an average day, the wind starts at 11 a.m. 
and it drops at 9 p.m. with certain like breaks in between. And so you know that you have the time. And so that's the training time where you want to put at least I want to put at least two sessions a day of one hour, one hour and a half, maximum two hours, really high intensity. And then in between, you can rest and you can prepare for the day. You can close the day. You can focus on other stuff, you know, like social media, like sponsors, all of, all the, all of that stuff. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. <laughs> uh, it, it almost seems like you have to kind of fit it in as best as you as, as, as possible. But again, you're subject to it, but you have to be as organized as possible with, with your agenda throughout the, the process. So that's really absolutely. Really cool. Can you, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to get to know each other as much as I'd like. So I'm going to use this opportunity hmm. to, get to tell you a little bit. Tell me about your windsurfing background. Like, where did it all start? When did Federico or Fede, right. as friends call him, <laughs> when did Fede wake up and say, hey, I want to I wanna give this a shot? So it's actually a pretty crazy story. It's always uh, fun and special, you know, to tell about it. But um I was uh, born and raised in Turin in Italy. So it's a, uh, it's a city in the Northwest part of Italy and it's close to Milan. I'm, I'm closer to the mountains. I'm an hour away from the mountains and two hours and a half away from the, from the sea, the Mediterranean sea. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was telling you before ocean. And so, but whatever, um, I was so lucky and I'm, I'll always be grateful for this. Like my dad was a windsurfer and actually my dad taught me a lot of different sports you know, like mountain biking, skiing, snowboarding. He's really passionate about sports. And, uh, but he really loved windsurfing. And the, what, the whole thing was that every summer, uh, summer holidays, the whole family dedicated summer holidays to windsurfing. So we would do like a trip somewhere. Um, and uh, it wasn't in Italy or in Europe, sometimes also internationally because my my, my, my family really loved to, to travel. So they would, you know, save on other things, but be able to have this trip that was pretty much focused on windsurfing. So a windy place. And then throughout the years, it became wind and waves. And so it was pretty much like that. I was windsurfing just in the summers, like from eight, I started at eight, nine years old and all the way pretty much 19. It was just a summer activity. During the year, I was going back to Turin. I was living in Turin. So I, I did all kinds of sports. I played like soccer, basketball, volleyball, rugby. I always loved all kinds of sports. And um, and I was, I, was, I was good at sports, you know, a bit because of my attitude, a bit because I had some talent. Yeah. And I really loved and always dreamed about being an athlete. But in a way, in that environment, being a professional athlete is not the first thing that comes up. You know what I mean? It's like, and my parents, which is good. They never pushed me too hard. And me at the same time, I never had that maturity to say, Hey, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Or, you know, also because you didn't have that, that inspiration, that close, you know, yeah, we had the football players, but you see that so far away, you know? And, and so that's pretty much, I would do all kinds of sports. I was good. I wanted to push it more, but I, I wasn't never, I never really put in like the, that extra effort, given also my, you know, um, young age, whatever that happened until 19, obviously throughout the summers, you know, people was noticing me they were saying, wow, for the amount of sessions that you put in, you're, you're, you're pretty good, but I was an amateur, you know, and, you know, when surfing every summer, this connection, this traveling connection to the ocean, the sport was just something else. It's just so challenging, just so so special and so at 19 i finished high school and my my parents made me the the biggest gift that i i've been a good student you know and so they made me this good big gift before starting university college and um and i went to maui to hawaii wow. for the first time alone at 19 from italy so for real on the other side of the world and um man Maui is the Mecca of windsurfing. I got there and I windsurfed with my idols. I windsurfed one of the most iconic, the most iconic windsurfing spot, windsurfing way spot in the world. I met the American and also like Hawaiian culture. Like it was so, I had so many positive shocks in a way, like so like bam, 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 bam. That's funny. You know, it's interesting that you say it that way too. Positive shocks because to, to <laughs> people say like cultural shock and things like that. <laughs> You're saying positive. exactly. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. It was positive because again, like people was positive and like the waves and the adrenaline and the idols like talking to you. And I was like, I was waking up happy, like, and I never felt that before. And and then after a 
few weeks of all this, I felt a click. Like I felt something, something, I felt like, like I wasn't a secure, I wasn't secure. I wasn't a confident person. I was, I was also given my environment, but just me, myself at 19, I wasn't confident. I was a little, I was a little negative, a little anxious. And, and there I just said, I just realized this is what I want to do in my life and I can do it and I can achieve it. I saw them in reality. I'm sitting with them. I know I can achieve that. And so it was a breakthrough, like really powerful. And when I go back, I remember like <laughs> crying, telling that to my parents. You know? <laughs> because it was so. They probably regretted sending you on the trip. They were scratching. <laughs> Why do you we know what? To Maui? Now we're going to lose them. <laughs> you know what? My dad told me, I will always remember. He told me I was afraid that this could happen. <laughs> Wow. That's big of him though. That's big of him because the whole, like you said, your whole life being nurtured and, and being exposed and shown what the, you know, the beauty of, uh, of this sport and what it could do for you. So that was really cool for them to be able to, he knew where he was sending you. I have a feeling he knew where he was sending you. They were like, I was so much into sport. It's, they, they just, you know, they had this as parents, they knew this could be like a dream, a dream come true. But at the same time, they, difficulty the the challenge the the instability and whatever but so from there my life pretty much started I, I had just started I had uh, my, my life changed <laughs> I say sometimes that, I, that my second life started but um mm -hmm. I just uh I I left uh engineering that was what, what what I started and my parents were still like because I mean I was starting from nowhere so I was like please give me this chance like help me out invest in me and and I will make it happen, you know? And they were like, okay, but we, 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 we want you to study, you know, because it, it would be too, too much of an extreme, yeah. um, you know, change. And so I, I studied, I continued like business administration, which then is something that I kept doing. And it wasn't an online course, but it was just an university that would come back during exams and just study on my own. And one, two weeks, try to prepare as many exams as possible and just, you know, leave again for, for, for windsurfing. So from there, this started, and then I just started building up, you know, I, I went straight in the best, as I told you, like, I was like, okay, I'm nine, I'm 19. I'm super late. If I want to do a professional sport, yeah. if I want to become one of the best in the world, I need to train in the best places with the best guys in the best time. And I need to do that consistently, either a hundred percent or so nothing. You dove, you dove right in both feet into the water. hundred percent. That's great. Man. That's awesome. And, and can you tell us a little bit about some of the competitions you've been a part of and kind of some of the ones that were you placed and, and how that's yeah. and kind of evolved? Yeah. So the, this, this whole thing, I was so committed. I was so dedicated and I loved it so much that actually after two years uh, of full-time training, I, I won my first international competition. That was a pretty, um, like uh impressive for myself you know in general but um so i won in peru uh the international windsurfing tour event the pacas mayo classic in 2017 and then from there i got a third place in chile and then i got uh, another second place in mexico in baja california mexico i how got a second place in chile how many people attend these types of events like how many windsurfers are competing at one time usually it's 20 25 and it can go up to 32 32 pros and, and these are, when you say 32 pros, you're talking about the best windsurfers in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about the best windsurfers in the world. You're placing top five over and over at these events after only being in the sport for three, four years. Uh, of what happened is, years. yeah. I mean, that's for sure was a, was a big uh, step. What happened is also that for a few years, we had two different tours in a way. Like one was the PWA that was a little more focused on Europe, more in jumping conditions because I, I'm sorry, I didn't tell this, but in windsurfing waves, we, what we do is we serve waves just like in surfing, you know, but with the sail that is kind of an engine in a way. So it gives us a lot of speed. And then at the same time, when we're going out, so we're, when facing the, the, the waves, we use the waves as ramps to, to jump and do, and do moves in the air. So these are the two parts of windsurfing wave. And you can have conditions that advantage jumping or riding, you know? And so, I was really into riding. And so I went a little more for the international with surfing tour, which had more like fully wave riding spots. And that's where I had my best results. Um, and so I, you know, I kept, I doubled down on that. 
<laughs> that's oh my gosh that and and to be able to just do that and jump right in i think that that speaks to the character of who you are and like you said you know you you view yourself as just an average normal person with some physical you know athletic attributes and then you're like i want to do this full time just by falling in love and following your passion and i think that's something that's so important for people to hear you know uh, it sounds cliche you hear it over and over but when you hear success stories of people that have said hey i followed my passion through and through and look where you're at today i mean i think both of your parents would be very proud to know that you're you're you know and I sure, I'm sure they are to know that you've accomplished and have done so much just from the trip to, to Hawaii. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. And I got to say, I was, I was, I was lucky. I was, a, I was really lucky in, in a way, like privileged in certain things. But, you know, I thought about this also for the years at the end, like you're giving a set of, you're giving a set of cards, right? And it's either you play it at, at your best or that's it. It's not like starting again. And so I was just like, look, I was lucky. I mean, I realized that I had this talent and passion because sometimes it's even hard to realize what passion you have or what talents you have. I was lucky that I, I kind of discovered them. I was lucky that my parents decided to invest in me. Uh, but at the same time, I was born into written, you know? So it's like, it's all a game of like, and, and, and from there to make it here is like, it was and and it still is but it's, it's a long way you know and, and that was thanks to commitment dedication like strategy sticking to it you know like and 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 putting in the work and and having the right uh, mindset I really believe that I really believe that and this board and this career it's so challenging was so challenging that in a way that's what I love but so I love windsurfing because it's so challenging there's always something more to learn and at the same time the professional windsurfing career it's so challenging in terms, in terms of economic sustainability and like development that again, it pushed me as a person, you know, yeah. at one point I was like, man, I need to, I need to improve myself. Like, it's not only about being good to water. I need to improve myself. I want to, if I want to step it up here, I need to be better at communicating. I need to be better at understanding people. I need to be better at uh, like a lot of different things. And so that pushed me. And, and that's, I think that's cool, you know? Yeah. And one of the things, you know, we talk about here at ASEA, we talk about it, it, it's, it's, it's really a phrase that it's very, very important and dear to our hearts. And you'll hear it through our, throughout all the different messaging that we have. And it's, we power potential. And I love it. <laughs> uh, in the elements of our product and the elements of the opportunity, the financial opportunity that this business can offer, that these products can offer uh, and the, the changes that they can make in, in people's lives. So to be able to couple that, it's interesting to hear you say that because it just goes, it it reiterates the fact that this is every element of life. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete. It doesn't matter if you work in a corporate setting. It, it does not matter what your walk of life mm -hmm. is. It, it's all incorporated. You know, I want to take a quick second. I was looking, I, I, I told you before we jumped on, I was looking at some of your content. I'd love to show a quick video here um, if I can get my screen to share. And I just want to walk people through some of the things that you put on social media and kind of um, share your social media posts, first of all. So share everyone your handle in case they don't know how to look you up. You want to share that with them? Right oh, now? yeah. Yeah, it's Federico Morizio. It's my name. So, you know. Um, I, I share a lot about windsurfing, but also as I was telling you, like what's, what's behind it, you know, because I want to be able to use all this experience that I'm able to, to leave and I'm um, lucky to leave and, and share it, you know, so how I'm, I'm making it in this challenging career, how I'm improving in the water in terms of performance, efficiency, and also as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it shows, I think it shows through your character, through the conversations, even, even the minimal conversations we've had you and I prior to this uh, to get to know you a little bit more and, and be able to see some of the things in the content, some of the shots you have on here, like this video, for example, so this one's in Maui. looks like you were yes. your old stomping grounds there. Uh, and I'm sure you've been there several times. Uh, it, so you're talking about those waves kind of running back and, and, and catching some of that. Is that what you're referring to? Like, what are you, yes. you judge or, or what are you working on here? So here, this was a pretty big day. So I was, uh, you know, in Hawaii, you can get, you can get big waves and, and that's a unique condition. Uh, Hawaii, this spot is called Hokipa in the Island of Maui, in the North shore of Maui. And it's, 
it's just uh that's the iconic spot that's where i where i went for the first time 80 years ago that changed my life and and still this spot has is teaching me every day and it takes me like always more sessions to understand because the direction of the waves the wind the current the the, the tide everything is changing consistently so you always have to be on it there's always something to learn and then and then here it's this here it's a video from this was in chile right you just did yes this. yes this is dreamy let me let me say this having the drone just follow you and you being able to move like this <laughs> this is uh oh this was a dreamy session here you can see how the wave it's like point break the wave is just opening and leaving you the right amount of space to to ride it and uh, the, the thing here hawaii too but the thing here in, in chile that the landscapes are so wild and i just uh I just love it, you know. I mean, the the nature is so strong. You feel it, you know. The wave, the nature, the rocks, the wind. There's a lot of energy. There is a lot of, but at the same time, this place it's 45 minutes away. But driving from where I'm right now, I'm in Matanzas, which okay. let's say is like the headquarters of the place here. And then from here, you move to the different spots. In this video, this spot in the video is called Topo Calma. And it's 45 minutes away. So you're seriously in the middle of nowhere. So when you get there, it's just like you get there and you see this wave and it's windy and there are these rocks and you're like, wow, like it's powerful. It's amazing. It's amazing. When, let me ask you a question. So this is the part that gets me excited. Um, when, when does a SIA enter your life? So as a, as you, as you can What, what I said, you know, is like, there's a lot of training, there's a lot of traveling, there's a lot of activities to do, like also besides the training, the physical and the windsurfing training, you know, there is the social media, all of that. And so sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to, to manage the energy, right? To manage the energy in the best way possible. And so I, I, I really believe that with the right attitude, training, And like as an athlete, I need to train outside of the water, physically, inside the water, and then also mentally. And then obviously I pay a lot of attention to my, to my diet, right? Because that's where, where you, you get the most energy from, right? What you eat, how you, how you sleep also, but how you think. And so I usually, I like to, in a way, count on myself, but again, sometimes it gets really tricky, really challenging. And so I'm always looking for some natural products that can give me that extra boost, you know? Yeah. And so when I heard about Asia from Sunny, a big friend of mine, and was like, you know, I could need that, but let's see, you know, because I don't want it to be something like uh, not natural or something like, and, and then I remember having um, the first uh, Asia energy And I was like, oh my God. Actually, I have, I have a story because I was like, I was here in Chile and I brought this guy with me, um, uh, this filmer. So to, you know, to film some content, to do some vlogs. Yeah. And um, after a few days of sailing, a few days in a row of sailing, I, I was pretty tired. It's really demanding on the body, you know. And, I can imagine. And so I got there and conditions were epic, but I was like, I looked at my film at Teddy and I was like, Teddy, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> it's tricky today. <laughs> I got that. It's awesome out there, but I'm, you know, I'm having a hard time. And, and then I remember that I had my Asia energy and I took it. And that day I got some of the best waves and, and some of the best videos. And my friend was like, man, since you got that, uh, that he didn't know exactly what it was. He was like, since you got that powder, you were like, you were like killing it. Like, what was it? Like, what's going what, on? You know, what kind of powder are you taking? <laughs> you know, what's funny. It's, it's interesting. Uh, did he know Did Teddy know before you took the ASEA, what, what you were taking or did he just, Did he just assume you were taking some energy drink, something like that? He just saw a big difference, you know, and then I felt it too, but he was really like, man, like, wow. And, you know, even in the water, but also out the water, I, I got out of the water that, yeah, I was always super excited with adrenaline, but I was still like full power. I was still like, you know, with plenty <laughs> of energy after a session where usually like you're stoked, but you're like, man, I need, I need to rest a little, you know? Did you, did, did it, uh, 
tell me a little bit about, did you get any mental clarity? Any, when you talk about like the mental element or like the thought process, did you, what, what were some of the things that you were like, okay, that feels different. So with the energy, I feel like, I just feel like I had, I had a a boost of energy and not like a boost, like 10 minutes, 30 minutes, a long-term boost. And the cool thing about it, because, you know, I, again, I, I get coffee, I get, I tried kind of, I tried products and the thing with this one, I, I went up in a way, but then it didn't have like a, like a drop. Yeah. And that's, and that's important because, you know, it's good until you're up, but then when you go down, it's bad. And so here, I just feel like it was like, and then slowing down and this for the energy. Well, like, for example, I took a lot of mind too. Mm. Um, and the mind was like, I, I also, I, it's hard to explain, but I pay a lot of attention on listening to my body, right? Because I want to maximize my performance. Sure. I want to maximize my level. I want to, improve and and be better all the time so i really pay a lot of attention on 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 how i feel what i feel why is like that why is like this i don't like to take uh like medicines you know uh, because i feel like they kind of like hide what's going on they don't really go there and solve it you know so i try to analyze and feel myself as much as possible and um the mind one i just feel like when i had a lot of stuff in my mind i was like unfocused pretty much unfocused I feel like I got the, I got the mind and I was like, and you know, you can't be unfocused before going in the water of like two, three meters waves, a reef underneath and like rocks. Like there's, there's not a lot of margin for error, you know, like there's not a lot of mistakes (laughs) permitted. So I feel like it kind of like from like this, it deleted and it, and it, and it permitted me to be like, like focused, you know, like I'm in the water, in the now, you know what I mean? In the now, yeah. that's yeah. in the now, which is so important. You hear this a lot from athletes being in the zone, being in the now. Yeah. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not that easy. And so having an extra help to be there in the moment, fully present, fully focused, that's where magic happens in the water. You know, they call it the flow state, right? You got to be exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah, I, exactly. I hear athletes from different backgrounds. I mean, I'm drinking, I'm drinking one right now. Uh, uh, I recognize know. it. <laughs> Mine's my favorite, but I, I mean, all of them really have their right, um, there, there's a right time and a right benefit to them, you know, early in the morning, depending on what you're doing and what you're performing. So that's, that's an incredible, that's an incredible. Exactly. And, 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 and you, and you, sorry, but you talk about this because, you know, I'm like, I need performance. I need like full power. I need to be energized. I want to, I want to be ready to hit the wave. I want to be, but you know what? The mood one was, a uh, was mind blowing because okay, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to be full power, but in a, in a, in a certain time frame, Right. <laughs> and so yeah. sometimes in the evenings, I'm still like in a drilling or, or like too much, too high, you know, and, uh, and I've been getting the mood because you, sometimes I have chamomile, chamomile tea, you know, but I was like, I tried the, 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 the mood and it just, uh, it just the perfect compliment to the other two because it just chilled me down you know what i mean yeah and especially also for when i sometimes i i wake up maybe with a little bit of headache you know that usually what you do like you you have a little bit of headache you you're a little like unfocused and so you're like oh i'm gonna get a coffee and then you get a coffee and you have even more headache and so i was like you know what instead of getting a coffee i'm gonna try to take a mood and that was that was crazy because that's the the best moment for me like when i had a little of headache I got the mood. I was a little anxious, waking up a little anxious or during the day, certain times, you know, maybe when you have to work a little more, uh, more computer stuff, office stuff, let's say I got the mood and it just like calmed me down. And so again, I was more, I was more in the present Yeah. and I was just like more calm and it was, I just got stuff done and, and, and no, no more headache, you know? So that's the mood actually was a really, really good one. Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, th- this is all a compliment and, and, you know, uh, to our, to our team who put these ingredients together, really top quality ingredients. And the more and more we share information details, the science and, and, uh, the benefits of each ingredient kind of broken down, even as I've gotten to understand them over time, man, they are incredible. And one of the things that you said that was really interesting to me was, you know, you talk about how you feel, but when other mm-hmm. people are noticing 
that is where I think that now it becomes even more powerful, right? Because I can feel great, but I may still be performing the same way. So for Teddy or other people around you to be like, hey, Fede, what are you on, man? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah. that's why I wanted so bad before my contest. I'm really like hoping to get, I finished my energy. I finished my Asiya energy and I really want it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks. You know, I, I appreciate that. I, I do have another question because as we're sitting here having this conversation, thinking about the athletic benefits, you know, what are some of the benefits that you see that this product could have for other athletes? So as you start to talk, now we're talking windsurfing, but maybe even broader, right? Your discipline yeah. translates to a lot of other sports. Um, you know, what are some of the benefits that you would say, okay, if I was to highlight, here are some key benefits that I would highlight for anybody to be on these types of products or, or, or the cell performance line. So uh, I think like for me as any other athlete, you want to be able to have, you know, a peak of energy in the moment that you're doing your activity in order to have the maximum intensity and the best performance. So for example, the mind and the energy are just great because I feel like it brought me up there. You know, I wasn't like, oh, I, you know, I, I can ride, I have a great wave, but I can't ride on my best because my arm is a little tired or I feel a little tired. There was nothing of that. And so it's kind of like you, you don't have these limits in a way, you know, you're just feeling good. And, and, you know, it's sports, it's, uh, it's physical, it's technical, but it's also really mental, you know? And so this whole thing about feeding your body, how you feel your body then affects your mind. And so it's all a game, right? And, and if you're, and if you're like motivated and you feel that the body is there, it's like, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready. Like, go for it. I'm here. I'm hundred percent. Then it, it becomes a bond. You know? <laughs> so yeah. uh, it's, it's the synergy between the mind, you know, the mental state and the physical state. And, and I think that's what you're referring to that. That is super absolutely. Powerful. And it, it, it is something that I think athletes have the ability to really connect well, um, you know, because they train at it so regularly. So that's super critical. Yeah. You know, but, and I think of this and I think of even, you know, people that are not professional athletes, you know, we all have everyday activities. You talked about the computer. Hey, I got to be on the computer. I got to do this kind of stuff. You can also receive the same benefits from, from, from product, absolutely the products and see, okay, it's making a difference in my day. You know, I take it on, on a daily basis and I take it because it does give me mental clarity with my thoughts, with my decision-making, with my ability to be able to process, you know, large sums of information. So that's really, really mm -hmm. cool to be able to, to, to hear you talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like, again, like for me, for example, is really important, maybe on the first day of windsurfing, of training, you know, if there hasn't been wind for a few days, you know, it's the first day I'm rested. I'm a little more like, but, you know, to be able to be that consistent. So the second, third, fourth, fifth day in a row, that maybe even if you're put in the work, you know, you've, you've stretched, you were training, you were like running, you, you've done it all. You're not, you're not at a hundred percent, you know, still, because it happens. Yeah. And that could be with like, for an, for a person, maybe in a, in a, in a city, it just could be like, you know, going to the gym on Friday evening, you know, you had, you had your, your whole week, you're tired. You, 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 you feel like maybe you don't want to, but you know that you, you, you should, you know, because that's, that's the training that matters when you're the most tired. And boom, there you go. You get a, you get a, you get an ASEA and you, you go there, you give it all and, and you achieve, you achieve, your, you achieve your goal, you know? That's exactly right. You know, your, your excitement gets me excited. Your excitement <laughs> ages. So I, I love you, you sharing but, that story. I, I appreciate it. Because it's, it, you know, and, and people here already know me because I'm going around like, I love, I feel like when I, and this doesn't didn't happen just the like in in this case, but in general, if I notice something great for me, I feel like it's nice to share it. You know, like obviously with Beautiful. the closest people to me, but also like on social media and stuff. Like if there's something that brings me benefits, and I tried it and I experimented, like I I don't I don't collaborate with a lot of brands because they really need they really need to be in line with my values, and I really need to. Um, try it and experience it and it has to be something that i would do even if it, even if it wouldn't be a deal you know so when 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 i find that 
then I'm like so excited about it. I'm here, I'm going around, like I see a person with a headache, I'm like, no, oh, take a mood. And then I'm like, are you tired? No, oh, take an energy. <laughs> and, and so like, I'm already known here <laughs> because I'm going Walking around. Three boxes, that's awesome. It, it kind of I dropped a little lately because I'm, my, my stock of uh, CS is going down. So I'm, I'm, I'm being a little more uh, selfish. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta manage it one thing you said that was beautiful and and i'll give you i'll give you any last thoughts you want to share with the young audience but i i want to make sure we we kind of touch on it and and you said it and i couldn't have said it better myself you know one of the things you said is if i know that something is works for me and is good for me why would i not share it with those around me and i think that's the message of what asia represents it's what it represents to me and i think it's what it represents to a lot of people listening it's if there's benefits to this product and to it can bring great uh, outcomes, great results to different people in different needs, why would we mm-hmm. not want to share it? So the the one thing I want to close with, that if if you allow me to, is you know we have a wide array of audience. You know we have mm-hmm. teens, you know uh, all the way up to every every age imaginable. You know uh, that you can think of, and people that are very excited about this company about what we stand for, about these products. You know, what if we're talking about wellness, we're a health and wellness company, you are as an athlete, what is the one message you would share with people as they are now entering 2023? We're in March, I shouldn't say entering, we're in March of 2023. Give people a wellness message. Um, You know, talk about, hey, here's how I would advise that all of you prioritize your health. Talk about some of the things that you would encourage those around you you know people that yeah i mean to me it's really simple Uh, obviously being an athlete um in a way like um not extremize that but puts let me put even more focus on it but like to me it's simple like i want to maximize well maximize my potential in a way you know and so um it's to me, it's all about energy and time. Like these are the most important assets that we have, right? So if you find a way to have more energy in a, in a healthy way and, and at the same time, gain some time, you're like, those are the best investments that you can, you can do, right? Because if you have more energy, then you can invest it in more, in more ways. And then time is like invaluable. Like it's just like the most important thing we have. And so to me, I'm taking care of myself, first of all, because the better you, you, you are, the better you feel and the better you, you, you think and the better you think, uh, the better you are, it, it's connected. And the better you leave, to me, the, the, the mindset is really important. And then I'm also like, I want to be, be healthy because I want to be out there in the water windsurfing until I'm, I'm, I'm 80. You know, I want to I have mental clarity. I want to be, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be, you know, like, it's just, I want to have a good, a good and happy life and energetic life as long as possible. And so I know that I need to invest from now on. And it's not even, I don't even see it as a sacrifice because I know that I'm just, it's just some, an investment that is coming back straight to me. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that you're, you're absolutely right. The two elements of investment is invest in yourself and it'll allow and yield for more time. So I, I couldn't agree more with those, with those messages. So, you know, like I said, you get to know people and meet people and certain people have a very high positive energy about them as human beings. And you're certainly one of them. So I appreciate you taking Thanks. the time to appreciate meet. It. Um, I can't wait to hear and see more of your story. Uh, I can't wait to get to know you even better. This is just, uh, you know, scratching the surface. I hope to all of those that are listening today or that are watching this today, uh, that they've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you, Fede. Fede. And I know Fede is for the friends, so I consider myself a friend now. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time. I know you have a busy schedule. Thank you for taking the time to, to be with us today, um, allowing for us to get to know a little bit about what windsurfing is and what the windsurfing community is and who you are as an individual. Um, we're proud to know that you're, you know, you represent ASEA, you're on ASEA and that you love the products. It's something that really excites me. Yes. And so thank you. Thank you for your time. And um, we will be in touch and talking soon. We'll have you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and, uh, you know, for letting me share these behind the scenes, which I hope can bring value and some inspiration, hopefully, to, to some people out there.
really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Feather. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Thank you so much.